Hi, I'm Chevy, and today let's discuss self-doubt. Hello friends, welcome to the hotel room. I'm not in the shed, I'm on the road. So you get to spend a little time with me in a less uh, personal space. This is a hotel room. Um, I just drove to Columbus, Ohio, so I'm here for a while. And today I wanted to talk to you about um, cognitive behavior, self-deprecating behaviors, uh, cognitive dissonance. I got, before I left for Columbus, I had got this amazing email from a friend in Alaska. His name is August, and August uh, made me a longbow, like a traditional longbow. Uh, it's called a stave bow, I think. Uh, he, he'll correct me, I'm sure, in the comments if I'm wrong. But essentially, it's a handcrafted hunting bow. And so I've known him for years through Twitter. We've never met. But in my call to action on Monday, I asked you to help me be an associate, help be my associate producers and give me some content for the show. And August like immediately put something together and emailed it to me. And I want to show you a bit of his video. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. Know that he didn't edit it. It was seven minutes long. And a lot of it was him trying to collect his thoughts in front of the camera, which is not an easy thing to do. So I'm going to just show you a clip of it, a piece of it, and, uh, and then I'll be back. I guess I should start off with the caveat that I have decided going into this to make it unedited. I am not going to filter myself here because I think that's important. I've heard you talk about your depression struggles and I've gone through that significantly. I mean, I missed chunks of work and I've gone through great spells of anxiety as well. Um, and I thought you're putting yourself out there and I kind of want to do the same thing. I think it's important that people hear other people, just normal people. So that's my caveat, unedited, with all my embarrassed strangeness. Yeah, it's strange sitting here talking to a camera but also to somebody who might watch this later. It's an odd feeling. It's kind of freeing in a way. At times in my life I felt like I've got something to say and it'd be nice if somebody heard it, but I don't know. Do I want to add my voice to so many other people? I don't know that either. But I, knew, I do know that this is a bit of a leap of faith, for lack of a better word. I mean, I'm embarrassed to be sitting in front of my phone talking to myself. <laughs> I'm a bit amazed that I've been able to go on for four and a half minutes almost, just to, to myself. I don't know if any of it's made any sense. Uh, but I'm also cool with that, because that's what you asked for. And I'm taking part. Okay, so that's August. Uh, August, welcome to the shed. Thank you so much for sharing your space with us. I love your little uh, setup that, you know, with the table and hanging stuff on the walls. That's pretty awesome. Like, your shed is, uh, is a good place. And now that you have that two-car garage, uh, keep us updated on progress in there. You know, when you start adding more to it and making it more of a space where you can create, send us some pictures from time to time and we'll put them on the show. 
Thank you so much again for sending that video. That was an insanely personal video, and I really want to give you a lot of credit for turning the camera on and taking the risk of putting yourself out there. It is not an easy thing to do. I, thankfully, have always been shameless, and so I have done quite a bit of public speaking, which means when I turn the camera on, I don't clam up, but I do sometimes have to hunt for words or hunt for ways to get my thoughts out and that can be a difficult thing to do especially when I'm trying to pack whatever message I'm trying to say into a 10 minute video without a lot of dead space so I have to keep talking uh, but make sense while doing it I can't just say goobly garble deedly dee for 10 minutes right so I want to applaud you for doing it I mean, that was amazing uh, it also, and around the same time I got the email, I was goofing around on Hacker News and I found this uh, Wall Street Journal article that really kind of ties in August's video, what I talked about yesterday when I cut my hair, and f general anxiety, or misplaced anxiety, I should say. Um, God, it, that, that light is messing with my glasses. Um, sorry if that looked terrible. And the name of the article is... Steps to Turn Off the Nagging Self-Doubt in Your Head. Now yesterday on the haircut video I told you that nobody cares about your appearance as much as you do. And that is absolutely true. And the same exact thought process can be put to all of your faults. You find way more fault in yourself than you should. And that's essentially what this article's about. Um, as August just told us, depression can be a very serious thing to deal with, and a lot of times it stems from self-doubt. It stems from you believing that whatever it is you're doing is not good enough, uh, you believing that you're not good enough to present yourself to others, whether physically or through a creation. So I'm going to read you some snippets from this article. This is uh, essentially like a, a, I don't know, like, I don't want to say a 12-step program, but it's a method for helping you kick those thoughts out of your brain and so you can get on with your day. And essentially the idea is when you have a bad thought, write it down. It involves a lot of writing, and writing is important okay writing is a very good way of getting things out of your head there's a reason why we practice writing so much in school it gets things out of your head and it also helps cement things in your head so essentially think of the last time you told yourself something negative or critical and then think of the compliment the last compliment you gave yourself which is easier to remember it's always you you probably don't compliment yourself very often unless you're mildly narcissistic so that's fine be mildly narcissistic there's nothing wrong with that um but the, the article tells you that you tell yourself too many negative thoughts so how do you deal with this you want to expunge those thoughts and learn how to replace them with positive thoughts. So the, the simple idea is be aware when you're thinking something negative, be aware that you're thinking something negative and change it. Your brain can only think of one thing at a time. You can't concentrate all over the place. So one of the last steps in this article, I want to move to the very top. Keep a couple of, like, standby thoughts. Literally, like, whether it's a brain puzzle, whether it's a, a future plan, like a trip plan or something like that, keep those positive thoughts on hold in your brain. And when you find yourself renumerating over some dread or some anxiety, just switch and think about those standby good thoughts. And that will totally help you. Uh, but be aware, you need to know that your thoughts are and change them and learn to notice your negative thoughts. Write them down, 
while you're writing them down, identify what triggered those thoughts and be super specific. So the example it says, my boss, my boss, my boss came in to talk to me and I started to worry that he hated my work and I am a loser. Once you've written that down, it, you suddenly, you see how absurd it is. That's not what just happened, but that's what you perceived happened. Um, then you're going to look for supporting evidence. So a lot of the things that you tell yourself are just completely untrue. So if you have the thought of, I suck, I'm, I'm always going to fail, I'm a loser, write that down and then try to find supporting evidence for that. Like try to prove to yourself that you're a loser. You probably won't find many examples. All right. In fact, you'll probably find good reasons that you're not a loser. Write those down as well. Remind yourself that you don't suck. It's, I want to say it's easy, but it's not. It, it takes time. This is like training your brain is no different than training a muscle in your body. You don't go to the gym and just start power lifting. That's not how it works. It takes time to retrain the way that you think about stuff. And so being cognitively aware gives you the opportunity to change your thoughts um, and writing strengthens your memory don't forget that that if you take nothing else away from this video remember write things down and I don't mean type them in your phone literally pen on paper write or use a typewriter it's the same thing um, and then eventually you're going to have this list of I, I hate myself and here's why I hate myself. Hopefully you'll come up with good reasons that you don't suck. And then you're going to be able to compare the evidence and say, I'm not as bad as I thought I was. Um, and the last thing they say is practice, practice, practice. Again, like I just said, um, you can't, you don't go to the gym and start just power lifting. You, you have to start small and it might take you a while. Reading this article through, I'll, did I say I'll link it in the comments? I'm linking it in the comments. You will find a good deal of more information about this whole process. But um, it'll tell you in there, it takes about 16 weeks for this to really kick in. So you have to remind yourself that you don't suck so that you won't fail at attempting this. Don't forget that. Uh, and the other, oh, this is a cool idea. And <laughs> When I read this, I thought, whoa. Create an imaginary friend. We're often nicer to our friends than we are to ourselves. If a friend told you he was telling himself the same irrational things you tell yourself, you'd have no trouble telling him he's wrong. So create a friend that's exactly like you, give him a name, and then pretend he is telling the same destructive stuff to himself, and then you tell him why he's wrong. And so... So I was reading that and I was like, oh, you guys are my imaginary friends, but you're my real friends, but you're my imaginary friend. That, this show has helped me out so much cognitively, so much. I've been able to focus so much negative energy away, focus. I've been able to put it away because of this show, because I'm able to every day take something, uh, a small piece of me and give it to you. And that helps me. Anyway, do it. Um, and that's, that's it, you know. Essentially, n understand when you're being an idiot and stop being an idiot. Stop criticizing yourself. Nobody criticizes yourself as much as you do. I promise you. So, that's my positive message for the week. I hope it helps somebody. Uh, don't forget to read the article. Click the link. It, it's a really good article. It, it'll probably help, I promise. So, uh, tomorrow is Friday. I'm going to do something a little different tomorrow. Again, it won't be from the shed. So, I hope you guys like what I've put together. We'll see. Until then, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And please, please, please share this video with your friends. Thank you. Hey, Doc, wait! I want to ask you something. Today's random fact comes from LiveScience.com. Do snakes have a good sense of smell? Most snakes have an excellent sense of smell in part.
apart to make up for their poor eyesight and limited hearing. Rather than a conventional nose, however, snakes sniff with an organ at the roof of their mouth called a Jacobson's organ, which is also found in a few lizard species. Yeah, that's why they flick their tongue so much. They're like gathering scenty stuff and then putting it in their mouth. Imagine like if you smelled everything by sticking it in your mouth. Mm -hmm.